Good morning. It is my distinct pleasure to address you on the 130th Annual General Meeting of the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Established by an active parliament, the chamber enjoys a truly unique feature in this regard. Your chamber continues to grow from strength to strength and has in recent times redoubled its commitment to innovate on its mandate. We have worked in this past year to continue what my predecessors started and to build, build upon that as we seek to usher in a new era of Guyana's development, one where the private sector continues to lead as the engine of growth, as Guyana seeks to build a sustainable, resilient economy in the face of challenges, so too does the GCCI aim to continue its evolution into a diverse organization that thrives in spite of headwinds. I would like to use this opportunity to thank all of the members of the GCCI, both new and long-standing members who continue to support this organization as we drive Guyana's growth and the nation's prosperity. Global economic growth during the year 2019 hovered around 2.9%. However, Guyana experienced growth higher than the average with a gross domestic product growth of about 4.6%. The performance of 2019 closed a decade of strong economic performance for Guyana where the benefits of fiscal consolidation and institutional strengthening of the previous decade acted as the foundation. The already strong economic performance that characterized the first five years of the decade was bolstered by the discovery of commercially viable quantities of offshore oil reserves in 2015 with Exxon's Lisa One discovery. While Guyana's growth was strong during the first five years, this discovery and subsequent ones saw Guyana being catapulted from being regionally known into international stardom within a relatively short period of time. Having had continued discoveries through to 2019 for a total of 16 discoveries, Guyana now boasts approximately 8 billion barrels of oil as it, its proven reserve. Further, the momentous first oil occasion in January 2020 acted as a milestone with the shift of the narrative from Guyana as a potential producer to Guyana as an oil producing country when the Lisa Destiny lifted her first barrels of oil. Since then, the government of Guyana has exported 1 million barrels of crude oil for a price of 55 million US dollars and has collected a royalty of approximately 1.2 million US dollars on the total sales of crude from the Exxon led consortium in the Stabroek block. Unfortunately, this bright prospect for 2020 has been dampened by developments both domestically and internationally. Internationally, changing tides in the global economy have been abound. These shifts are twofold and mutually reinforcing. Firstly, there has been a significant reduction in the pace of economic activity due to the novel coronavirus, also known as COVID-19. Secondly, Prices have collapsed in the petroleum sector as a result of the production war between Russia and Saudi Arabia, as well as a, a collapse in global demand due to the pandemic. COVID-19 is leaving an indelible mark on Guyana and undoubtedly the world. In fact, world statistics, when I wrote this speech, were 1.2 million people were infected 66,500 people had died and 252,600 people had recovered. I would like to take a moment to remember all who have lost their lives and their loved ones to this virus, which up to this date still has no known cure or treatment. 
The second phenomenon of the collapse in oil prices, for instance, currently, a barrel of Brent crude, again, was trading at about US $34, and that was at the time of writing. That serves as an important warning to Guyana to ensure that the economy is diversified, balanced, and not solely dependent on the petroleum sector, which can ex be extraordinarily volatile. As a result of the discoveries of petroleum reserves, Guyana's economy will undergo structural change in the near term as the country transforms from being a net importer of petroleum to a net export. This transformation changes the balance of the equation for Guyana, shifting the country from a country which benefits from a collapse in oil prices to one which is acutely afflicted by these collapses. It becomes necessary, therefore, to ensure that the public financial management of the economy is robust in order to avoid a malaise of economic problems that ensue in an environment of weak policy and legislative framework. Domestically, Guyana has been afflicted by COVID-19, which in addition to posing an economic problem, is a major public health risk to the Guyanese people. When I wrote this speech, Guyana's statistics were 23 persons were infected, 4 persons had died as a result of the infection. This public health crisis is unprecedented in its nature, and independent Guyana has never seen anything like it. Unfortunately, it has coincided with a crisis in the political arena that has afflicted the quality and extent of our national response to the pandemic. As regards to the domestic political crisis, the general and regional elections held on March 2, 2020, we as a Guyanese people continue to face delays in announcing the results through subterfuge by actors involved with the Guyana Elections Commission, or GCOM. This has pushed the country's populace to their wit's end of patience and should not be experienced by any country, let alone a state such as Guyana, with a history marred by politically related conflict and tension. It is our hope that in the near term, constitutional reform becomes more than a rallying cry for political parties and is undertaken with zeal and gusto to ensure the protection and preservation of our fledgling democracy. In this regard, it is of extreme importance to note that the GCCI will always stand on the side of the rule of law and democracy. It is imperative that all Guyanese who desire to live in a prosperous modern nation be supportive of these fundamental principles and ensure that we never slip into the dark days of being a pariah state. In spite of the challenging environment confronting Guyana, the GCCI over the past year continues to improve its standing and evolve as a business support organization. The heart of the chamber and its membership during the past 12 months has seen an increase in membership which stands, to a uh, stands as a testament to the growing confidence in the representation and services which the chamber offers. Over the past year, the 2019-2020 year, the chamber has added 120 new members, a number unprecedented in the history of the chamber. And thus, by a great measure of distance, the GCCI is the largest BSO in Guyana, comprising in excess of 340 members. These members continue to benefit from the lobbying of the chamber, networking, workshops, forums, seminars, information sessions, inward and outward trade missions, advertising opportunities whilst being supported by a competent cadre of highly professional staff. Contained in our annual report for this period, you will find a detailed list of activities which the Chamber has undertaken. Noticeably, the Chamber continues to perform more functions, host more events, and continuously expand on its product offering. This is key in ensuring that our members receive value for money. Our financial position remains strong for a business support organization and has over the past decade the net surplus 
was around 7.7 .7 million Guyana dollars for the year 2019 and an improvement in performance over the previous year's surplus of 6.6 .6 million Guyana dollars. Additionally, cash and cash equivalents have improved from 30.4 million Guyana dollars in 2018 to 44.2 million Guyana dollars in 2019 at the end of the year. This increase in cash and cash equivalents is as a result of increased revenue from the Chamber and overall a more efficient operation which allows for the accumulation of cash for the period. It's important to mention that should the domestic and global economy rebound in the near future, that the revenue stream for the future looks promising as we continue our efforts to increase membership in the Chamber and grow our financial base. I would like to thank my colleagues at the Chamber of Commerce, the councillors, for entrusting me with the responsibility to lead this prestigious organization over the past year. Your continuous efforts and time to improving the private sector, and by extension, the nation, ensures that our country ensure, continues to move in the right direction. Your counsel, wisdom, and collective support have certainly assisted in making this tenure easier and worthwhile. I would like to thank the Executive Director and the staff of the Chamber's Secretariat, their diligent work in executing the decisions of the Council, the Executive Management Committee and committees ensures that our vision transforms into reality. I am extremely happy to know that we are supported by a group of young, dynamic and zealous individuals who are not only committed to their job, but are committed to the improving the state of the private sector and Guyana as a whole. To all agencies and stakeholders who continue to work with the Chamber in support of the business community, I would like to acknowledge the role you play in ensuring that the private sector grows and is able to function in an environment which accommodates business. A sincere thank you must be extended to the media in their indefatigable manner who ensured that all messages reach the Guyanese population. I would like to give a special thank you to our members who are also sponsors of events, activities, publications, and other forms of fundraising that we do. Most importantly, to all our families, friends, supporters, and well-wishers who stood by us through difficult moments and gave us the strength to keep going, your support is truly appreciated. Let this opportunity be one where we can reflect on our successes and failures which have gone before us and let us be humble enough to accept them and be wise enough to learn from them. Let us all continue to work harder to support the growth of this great nation, forging together in unity as one people, one nation, one destiny. I thank you and it has been a pleasure serving as your president for the 2019-2020 year. Thank you.